Good morning. Welcome to worship today here at East Nidaros, and we also welcome our guests joining us online uh, for online worship. Uh, it's a wonderful day today. Our text for today says, no one who puts his hand to the plow 
and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. We're going to talk about what it means to be a follower of Jesus and how we follow Jesus and how we don't follow Jesus. And so uh, much of our worship uh, surrounds uh, that theme today. A few announcements before our worship begins. It seems like this is a weekly announcement, but another month has flown by. And uh, our next newsletter is about to go out, so if you are able to help us this Thursday in the church office in Baldic to uh, assemble the newsletters, uh, we welcome any volunteers that would like to help us. Uh, as time is going along, soon our Vacation Bible School will be happening. Uh, if there's anybody you know of that uh, would enjoy being a part of this, go to our website, uh, go to this registration form, uh, Google form, and uh, sign your children up for that. We're looking forward to this one day uh, VBS event, and uh, much is already in place, and even more exciting things to add to it. It sounds like a uh, uh, horse-drawn hay coming with it. Hopefully this stays with me. Um, so we look forward to this event coming up. Also, uh, we send our congratulations to this couple. Last night, I presided over the wedding of Cooper uh, McGreevy and Sydney Fiala. Uh, I've never done one at the atrium in Sioux Falls. It is a beautiful location. And last evening, uh, you can see the wind blowing a little bit, but it was just pleasant out there and a wonderful event. And we wish them well as they begin their new life as a married couple. With that, we have birthdays this week, Erica Broberg, Tanya Vallon, Patty Franz, Jason Turner, Molly Koenig, Mercedes Lodmel, Deb Carlson, and Julius Algier. And uh, I said that wrong, Algier. I got to get that right now. It's Algier. <laughs> All right. And uh, happy anniversary to Travis and Robin Brothers and Rory and Kelly Lavalier this week. I think those are the announcements that I have. Are there any from you this morning that we need to call to your attention before our worship begins? If not, I invite you to stand as you are able as our worship begins with a brief order of confession and forgiveness. And the words are printed in your bulletin or on the screen you'll read them. And we begin the service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that attended for your word we may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow in the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ the Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God, and love one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please join as we sing our opening hymn, Will You Come and Follow? Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me? Will you leave yourself behind if I but call your name? Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same? Will you risk the hostile stare should your life attract or scare? Will you let me answer prayer in you and you in me? 
Will you let the blinded see if I but call your name? Will you set the prisoners free and never be the same? Will you kiss the leper clean and do such as this unseen? Admit to what I mean in you and you in me. Will you love the you I hide if I but call your name? Will you cross the fear inside and never be the same? Will you use the faith you found to reshape the world around through the sight and touch and sound in you and you in me? Lord, you summon echoes true when you but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I'll go where you love and footsteps show. Thus I'll move and live and grow in you, in you, in me. Our worship continues on page 28 in the blue hymnal, or the words are provided for you on the screen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. praise. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest. Glory to God, glory to God, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest. Glory to God, glory to God, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest. Be to God. Glory to God and peace to God's people on earth. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Glory to God, 
glory to God, glory to God in the highest. Glory to God, glory to God, and peace to God's people on earth. And peace to God's people on earth. The Lord be with you. And we pray together the prayer of the day. Let us pray. O God, you have prepared for those who love you joys beyond understanding. Pour into our hearts such love for you that loving you above all things, we may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And you may be seated. Good morning, everyone. First lesson today is from 1 Kings. Then the Lord said to Elijah, Go, return your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazel as king over Aram. Also you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshah, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elijah, son of Shaphat, and Abel Mahola as prophet in your place. So he set out from there and found Elijah, son of Shaphet, who was plowing. There were twelve yoke of oxen ahead of him, and he was the twelfth. Elijah passed by and threw his mantle over him. He left the oxen, ran after Elijah, and said, Let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. Then Elijah said to him, Go back again in what I have done to you. He returned from following him, took the yoke of oxen, and slaughtered them. Using the equipment from the oxen, he boiled their flesh and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he set out and followed Elijah and became his servant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm today is Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, You are my Lord, my good above all others. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their libations of blood I will not offer, nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. Reason in clothes and pleasant land. Indeed, I have goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord close for me, because he is at my right hand, I shall not fail. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness and joy and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Second lesson today is Galatians 5. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you are called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence but through the love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summoned up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit, I say, 
and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the spirit, and what the spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you, as I have warned before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we prepare for the gospel, uh, we invite children to come forward for a children's message as we sing Jesus Loves Me. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak. You can stand up. Why don't you stand up? Yeah. Ranger, stand up. Come over here. Come over here. Here we go. Loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. How are you, Ranger? Good. Good. All right. Today we're going to hear more stories about what it means to follow Jesus, but we've had a couple lessons uh, that talk about plowing. Do you know what plowing is? Yeah. Is that what they're doing there? Yeah. What are they pulling the plow with? Um, a horse. They're, pu- they're pulling it with two horses. And... Uh, would you say he's plowing pretty straight? Yeah. Yeah, he's doing pretty well. Yeah. Trudy, didn't your dad go in plowing contests up at Prairie Village, if I remember? Yes. I thought so, with the 8 and Ford. And one of the things that they judged him on was how make sure that the, the uh, plowing was uh, at the same depth, but a big deal was that you went straight. And uh, how do you suppose he's going straight? That's exactly right, and he's got to help them go straight. Um, another thing that helps us go straight, what do we have to do? Do you look behind? You've got to look ahead. So and that was one of the first lessons that I taught, or got taught when I was uh, starting to do some of those things. I'd, he'd say, now find a tree or something off in the distance and just focus on it. So I bet that guy is looking right up at that tree, keeping those horses going right there so it goes straight. And it goes pretty good that way. But we'll show what happens if you look back. Let's show another slide. Uh Uh-oh. How does that look? Not Not good, is it? It's not good. It's crooked. That's like my plowing would be. Used to be. Now... I just set it on zero degrees, or <laughs> but it's not me doing it. <laughs> That's the difference. Uh, so Jesus teaches us a lesson about plowing and following him. One of the first things we taught, learned in that first lesson, did you hear what happened to the oxen of Elisha? When he said, follow Jesus, he put an end to the oxen. He went back, slaughtered them, and he said, if I'm following you, I'm not doing that anymore. I don't need my oxen anymore. And he just followed him. Kind of a hard lesson for us to follow. Yep. Yep. And uh, the other thing he says, if you're following me, look ahead to me. Like if we look at the picture of Jesus, we should just focus on him. And then we won't wander other places. But we tend to do more like that. Then we do like this, but you know what? That's okay, because Jesus says, I forgive you. When you don't follow me, 
but I am here whenever you are ready to follow me. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that we have, uh, have you to follow, a true person to follow. That, and when we look from side to side or look back at what we've done, we don't focus on what you have done for us. Thank you for going to the cross for us, giving us salvation, the one thing that we truly need. And for all this, we give thanks, and all God's children said, Amen. All right. Thank you for coming up, Ranger, and invite the rest of you to stand for the gospel acclamation. Yeah, Lord, to whom shall we go? gospel today is according to Luke, the ninth chapter. When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. But they did not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, heard it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. And as they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go bury my father. But Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord. But let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. This is the gospel of our Lord. And you may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In today's gospel reading, it is at the point in Luke that Jesus makes a change. And Jesus is turning the page in his ministry as he turns and sets his face toward Jerusalem. He is focused on what, he, what is yet to come, where he will suffer death on the cross for the sins of the world. And as he sets his face toward Jerusalem, he encounters several people who he uses examples for us today of what it means to be a follower of Jesus. Jesus begins by teaching two of his own disciples who needed some additional schooling on discipleship. Jesus had sent messengers ahead of him to a village in Samaria where he had planned on staying. When we hear about someone who is a Samaritan, we often associate such a person as who is someone who will go out of their way to demonstrate additional care for a neighbor, like the Good Samaritan did. However, the Good Samaritan that Jesus told this parable about is not like the Samaritans in this town. Samaritans in general, and certainly those in this village, were not those who welcomed strangers and outsiders, and they did not welcome Jesus. The Samaritans worshipped at Mount Gerizim, and they associated Jesus with the rest of the Jews who worshipped in the temple in Jerusalem. And because of this difference of the place where they worshipped, they did not want Jesus to stay in their town. But this rejection for Jesus was not the first, nor was he surprised at it. He may not have remembered when he was born, when he first was rejected, but do you recall the Christmas narrative, where there was no place for the parents of Jesus to find shelter for even his birth on that night? 
And last week we heard another story when Jesus was rejected. After Jesus healed the man of many demons, they were not impressed with his act of mercy. Instead, they asked him to leave town. And in today's reading, once again, no one offered Jesus a place to lay down his sweet head. This is one of the lessons of discipleship that Jesus taught from this experience. Jesus said that foxes and birds have places to find shelter in this world, but don't be surprised that when you are following Jesus that you will not be open, welcomed with open arms, but rather you may be rejected because of your beliefs and might be sent away. Jesus showing kindness and mercy to the undeserving is the reason that he is not welcomed by those who, who feel they have done something to deserve his attention. James and John, who were disciples of Jesus, had seen how Jesus, the soon-to-be Savior of the world, was rejected from this village. These two brothers, as you may recall, were known as the Sons of Thunder. Their father was Zebedee, but in Scripture we really can find very little about him that would connect his father with thunder, but what James and John said after Jesus was rejected might be the reason for their nickname. James and John, like the other disciples, had been given authority and power as disciples. They had used this power to cast out demons and to heal people. But when Jesus was rejected by the village, James and John, the sons of thunder, wanted to use their power to destroy these people by sending down fire from heaven. This desire of James and John to destroy people who did not agree with Jesus brought about another opportunity for Jesus to teach a lesson in discipleship. Jesus taught them that followers of Jesus do not use their gifts to destroy the church. They use them for the benefit of the church. Also, it is never the job description of a follower of Jesus to be the judge and jury for what someone seems to be doing wrong, as James and John wanted to do with the people of this village in Samaria. A follower of Jesus' sole purpose is to proclaim the kingdom of God to all people. Jesus himself had the authority and the ability to send down fire into this village and destroy it, but he too he came to save and not to condemn. And causing these people to perish in a fire on earth would forever put an end to any future opportunity to proclaim the saving power of Jesus when the time, right time might come and these people would be ready to listen. The next person that Jesus encountered, to use an example about what it means to be a follower of Jesus, may have come up to Jesus singing, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. That hymn likely was written based on this passage. However, we believe that we follow Jesus because he has called us, not because we have made a decision to follow him. But in this case, Jesus didn't say to this person, follow me. It was this man who told Jesus that he would follow him and he would follow him wherever he would go. But we never hear about this man again or any of the other people in the scripture for that matter. So we don't know if he followed Jesus or if he fell away from him. But we do know that it was not this man that walked beside him as Jesus carried his own cross to Golgotha. We also know that this man was not buried in the tomb with Jesus, nor did he come out of the tomb with him on Easter morning. So it is safe to say that this person did not follow Jesus everywhere that Jesus went. We are also reminded from this one encounter that people who claim to choose to follow Jesus like to take credit for what they are doing rather than give credit to Jesus, who they are called to follow. People who claim to follow Jesus like to talk about the crosses they are bearing for, their, for Jesus rather than give thanks to Jesus for the cross that he bore for them. The very next person that Jesus runs into is called by Jesus. Jesus said to this person, follow me. This person did not respond in the same way that 
the disciples did when they were called and dropped whatever they were doing and followed. James and John, the two people mentioned, the two disciples mentioned in the scripture, the sons of thunder were such disciples who left their boat and their father Zebedee sitting in it when Jesus said, follow me. They left and followed him. However, this person instead put a condition on Jesus' call when he said, I will follow, but first, but first I need to go bury my father. I read where some Bible scholars suggest that this person's father may not have even died yet. This person's willingness to follow Jesus was going to be on his timeline. It may not happen until his father had first died and until he had received his inheritance. This person was not willing to trust that Jesus would provide for him, so he wanted to wait until he had a little money in his bank account for security before he went and followed Jesus. And then the final person that, again, seems to have made a personal choice to follow Jesus also adds a condition to his commitment to follow. This person tells Jesus that he wants to go home and say goodbye to his family before he begins to follow him. Following Jesus for this man is going to be done once again on his terms. He wants to decide if and when he is going to follow Jesus. Jesus reminds this man that whenever he tells him that those who look back to, to, as they are plowing are not fit for the kingdom of God. Following Jesus has nothing to do with what you have done in the past. Following Jesus is in the present and focusing only on him. So after all these examples, Jesus points out that following him is not an easy path. In fact, it's impossible for any of us to truly follow Jesus and make a straight line to him. It's not a path that any of us would choose on our own to take. And we, like the people that Jesus encountered, who claim to follow Jesus, will do so only on our own timeline and terms. Following Jesus does not give us permission to send down fire from heaven on people we believe that Jesus should destroy. Following Jesus is simply hearing what Jesus has done for you and proclaiming this good news to others. Yes, when Jesus says, follow me, he means, follow me. And there is nothing more important for you to do like saying goodbye to family and friends at home or attending a funeral of a family member. Yes, these are very important things to do. These are things that we will do, but they are not first. Jesus tells you today, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these other things will be added to you. Amen. And we sing the hymn of the day. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Allelu, alleluia. Ask and shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Allelu. Alleluia. We do not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Alleluia. Alleluia. I invite you to stand as you are able as we confess together our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. <coughs> Amen. Just wanted to let you know that uh, Ben Kringen had to spend a night in the hospital this week, and <coughs> he is uh, he was in church this morning, but uh, having some pain, and uh, they're still trying to figure that out, so we are including him in our prayers this day as well. I visited with Steve Gunderson today, and Jean Berge had a bad fall, but she is in rehab now and uh, doing much better, so we are continuing to pray for her. Uh, Sherry Schroeder has been on our prayer list too, and uh, that is the sister of Dixie Fiala, where we were at the wedding last night. Uh, she had a brain tumor with surgery on it and was making miraculous recovery, uh, and now has taken a turn away from that, And but we are hopeful that uh, another miracle can happen, so we pray for them. We turn to our Lord in prayer. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. God of our salvation, when your son set his face to go to Jerusalem and the cross, his zeal would not be deterred. Grant us to pray with the same fervor and boldness, trusting that you hear us for the sake of the Son of Man. Lord, in your mercy. God of compassion, you established the family to be a place of protection and growth. Grant that our homes would never become a stumbling block to the kingdom of God, but that they would serve to foster within us the fruit of the Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. God of refuge, your salvation draws near to all who trust in you. Grant peace to your people and show us your salvation. Hear our petitions for healing, strength, and comfort. For Ben Kringen. Rick Fiala, Sherry Folds, Doris Krogsted, Dorothy Sittig, Donna Lee Boyd, Betty Jean Benjamin, Ryan Voltz, Jimmy and Tanya Vallen, Rhoda Wold, Ella Riswold, Paul Ramsdahl, Laura Ann Olson, Sherry Schroeder, Jean Berge, Michael Gross, Gordon Dirksen, Clara Shank Gabriel, Dennis Riswold, Brenda Bertrand, John Jurgensen, Daryl McMahon, and also others whose names we now raise silently before you from our hearts. We pray that you would be near them as the refuge of the weary and the God who preserves his people. Lord, in your mercy. God of holiness, in this heavenly food and drink, you graft into our hearts the love of your name. As you create new hearts within us, bless us with the fruit of the Spirit that our love for you might be expressed for our neighbor's good. Lord, in your mercy. Out of our Lord Jesus Christ, grant that the whole church might fix her eyes on him. Teach us the way of the cross. Remove hindrances and distractions. We pray that we do not let the freedom that we have in the gospel become an excuse for sin and vice, but an opportunity for love and service. Lord, in your mercy. Now into your hands, Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let's share God's peace with one another.
At this time, we will receive the offering. Please stand as you are able as we sing our offering hymn. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts. With them we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who rose beyond the bounds of death and, as he had promised, poured out your spirit of life and power upon the chosen disciples. At this, the whole earth exalts in boundless joy. And so at the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna. In the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
In the same way when supper had ended, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a New Testament in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom as you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. You'll follow the directions of the ushers to come forward, and we'll receive communion in front of the altar today. There are a couple of communion hymns for us to sing during the distribution. I invite you to come forward as all is ready. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us, Lamb you take away the sin. Of the world. Look at the This is the body Christ given for you.
stand as you are able. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Together we sing. Thankful hearts and voices raise. Tell everyone what God has done. The Lord, the Lord rejoice. And may Christ's holy name send us with your promise. O God, and lead us forth in joy with shouts of thanksgiving. Alleluia. And let us pray. Almighty God, you provide the true bread from heaven, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant that we who have received the sacrament of his body and blood may abide in him and he in us, and that we may be filled with the power of his endless life, now and forever. Amen. And now receive the blessing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. 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 We are singing our sending hymn, What a Fellowship, What a Joy Divine. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. How, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, what have I to fear, leaning on the everlasting arms? Why have blessed peace with my Lord so dear, leaning on the everlasting arms? Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, leaning on the everlasting arms. Go in peace and serve your neighbor.